Hey, I'm here again at the Healing Garden outside the hospital. Gemma had her 12th uh, appointment. Actually, she didn't have 12 appointments this week. She had her last appointment of the week. Um, many of those appointments uh, were hers, but I mentioned in a different video that I had 12 appointments altogether this week. Um, that was combined between uh, my other children, myself, and Gemma. So today's Saturday and it was her last appointment but she needed to eat before I take her home so I know I recorded the other day in this healing garden and I really enjoy it here um, so I decided to record again while I'm sitting here I luckily have it all to myself there's no one out here she just got done uh, finishing up eating um, I don't know if it's necessarily a healing uh, garden for me that it's healing me but while I'm sitting here I definitely reflect a lot it's a really beautiful place to do that so um, I'm here with a message uh, about being a preemie mom and uh, also suffering postpartum depression first of all I want to let you know that um, some of you are preemie moms especially micro preemie moms and then some of you know people who have had a preemie. Pretty much everybody, I think, has encountered a person who has had a preemie uh, or has had a preemie themselves, or both. Um, firstly, I want to say I know that a lot of people um, want to try to empathize with um, other preemie parents and NICU parents, and that's fine. Um, that's good. Uh, but I want you to remember something that they told me in the NICU that comparison is um, really bad for us. Um, comparison in everything in life is bad. You, comparison is a joy killer. Um, you know, comparing what you have to what others have or what you're like to what others are like, what your uh, faults are um, and what other people appear to be doing perfectly well at. Um, you always want to strive to be like someone else or be better. Um, and that's a joy killer. It's not good. It's it's important to recognize what you need to work on for yourself based on You know what's going to make you happy and not um, just keeping up with the Jones Joneses But when it comes to preemies in the NICU, they told me it was really important to not compare Gemma to the other preemies um, She's 26 and 2 she was born 26 and 2 um, you know, there are other preemies that are born earlier than her that, you know, I know one particular got out of the hospital before Gemma, um, and she wasn't even 39 weeks to station. Gemma was there, you know, a week after her due date, and there's a lot of preemies that are there for long, long after that. Um, I know of one who's a day younger than Gemma who is still in the hospital now, um, you know, and she's been home two months. So it's just very... It's d dangerous, really, to compare. Um, so, as much as you want to empathize, um, if you had a preemie that was maybe like a 33-weeker, 34-weeker, um, and you meet somebody who has a 24, 25, 26-week preemie, it's okay to say that you had a preemie, that's fine. But try to refrain from trying to give that person hope, saying, well, my preemie's okay, so your preemie's gonna be fine, too. Like. My preemie is grown up now and doesn't have any challenges, so yours is going to be fine too. That's not helpful. Um, in some ways, it's almost offensive. Um, it's not to say that you don't have a preemie and that your issues aren't real and valid. Uh, when you have a 32, 33, 34 week preemie, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that every week in utero, every day really, is such a huge change that you know, even a 30-weeker compared to a 26-weeker, you know, that's four weeks in utero that that baby got to grow and be fed by the placenta. So um, the outcome is very often different, and the expectation is very different. So while it's okay to say, oh, I also had a preemie, and to say that, don't try to compare. You know, even if you find somebody that has a baby that's around the same gestation as yours, um or that was born around the same gestation, being a micro preemie as well, you know, maybe a, comparing a 25, 26 weeker, or even two 26 weekers, just because one's okay, um, you know, doesn't go on, home on oxygen, doesn't have an NG tube going home, doesn't mean another one's gonna be 
So just be there for each other and supportive, but don't um, compare. So that's my message about micro preemies in comparison. Um, and then my the rest of this message is about postpartum depression. So I mentioned in other videos that I am openly struggling um, with postpartum depression. And those of you who, who might be also struggling with this, sometimes I think it's really hard for us to admit it to ourselves that we are. Um, it was really hard for me to admit it because it was like almost what I considered two things. First of all, like personal failure, like it's my fault that I'm depressed or I kept telling myself, get over yourself, get over yourself. You're fine. What you like, what's your problem? Just like trying to make myself better and blaming myself for my shortfalls. Um, and then the other thing was not making time for me. Um, like I was like, okay, okay, maybe I do have depression, but what am I going to do about it? Like, I don't have time to go see a counselor. I don't have time to take care of anything. You know, I just need to keep on keeping on for, you know, cause I just, I just need to, um, there's no way out of this. I, you know, I just need to keep, keep moving. Um, but that's not fair to yourself or to your family. Um, if you think that you might be struggling with it and sometimes it doesn't even look like what you call quote unquote depression. Sometimes it just seems like anger. Um, postpartum depression includes anger. And for me, it does a lot. Um, very get very frustrated and angry to the point where sometimes I'm throwing things. I'm kicking the wall and slamming things around. I've hurt my hands or my feet, um, you know, slamming something or kicking something um, just because I'm angry and frustrated. Um, and I think recognizing it and deciding that you're going to do something about it, meaning like get a counselor and make time to fix it. That's definitely the biggest and hardest, most important step to that first one. Um, for me, this is very personal. You know, for me, this is not something that is necessarily going to be like the solution to all of you if you have it, but it was really important for me to, to do this step and my counselor recommended that I email all of my family, meaning my brothers and sisters, my husband's brothers and sisters, my in-laws, my parents, and I told them what I'm dealing with. And that was like a very important step. I just did this a few weeks ago and it felt like a weight off my chest to be able to actually have people, as much as I know there's gonna be gossip and judgment because that always happens, at the same time, just to have people understand. And so I don't burn bridges when I'm not answering phone calls or texting people back or wanting to visit. So if you are struggling with postpartum depression and you haven't, you know, after admitting it to yourself, if you haven't admitted it to your loved ones, um, I recommend it. Think about it, it's personal, maybe not, maybe you don't want to, but definitely consider it. How can they help you if they don't know what you're struggling with, right? Um, also, it makes it very real. It's calling out that elephant in the room. It's like, okay, now that we all know this is going on, what are we going to do about it? Because sometimes it's too big for you to take care of by yourself. Admitting it to everyone has created um, options for me. So right now, my mom and dad have my older three siblings. They took them on vacation to give me a break and I need it, I really do. And it's, um, I feel like when they come back, I'm gonna feel like a different person. And I know that in some ways sounds selfish, but if that's what needs to happen, that's what needs to happen. Um, you know, earlier this week, I think I mentioned in another video, my kids um, spent a day at my parents' house, then slept overnight at my in-laws, and then had, were at my in-laws' house the following day. So for two days in a row, I pretty much had no kids except Gemma. And um, so now I have my younger two for this next week, with the older three being gone. And things like that, just a break, um, is really important. It's important. Um, and you can't sort things out on your own if you are just constantly overwhelmed. Um, so keep that in mind that you owe it to yourself as the mother, 
taking care of your baby and everyone else, you know, in your household that if you have postpartum depression, you've got to put them aside for a little while while you work on your own issues. Um, sometimes I feel like people are judging me like she doesn't seem depressed right now. Like maybe my sister sees me or my mom sees me or you see me in a video and you're like, well, she doesn't seem like a depressed person. And that's an odd thing about postpartum depression. Maybe all depression. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had any other depression besides postpartum, but I'm really good at shutting it off. Um, if I need to, there are times when I'm like crying in a grocery store. No joke. I'm not even kidding you. Crying in a grocery store, crying while I'm driving my car, crying at a gas station, crying, talking to a stranger. It's embarrassing, but it's happened to me. I'm usually pretty good at shutting it off. Um, but not always. And it's not always good to shut it off. Um, my survival mechanism is just, you know, put on my game face and just keep moving. Um, and then it kind of comes and goes, you know, anyway. So sometimes I might feel okay. I might feel generally all right and relaxed and content. And then three hours later, I'm like falling my eyes out. Um, and that's how it works. It's not all the time, you know, it's, you know, there's times when I feel like I can't even, like, do anything in my house. I'm, like, so beside myself for whatever reason that I'm, like, I can't cook, I can't clean, I can't do anything. I'm, like, incapacitated, and it might be temporary. It might last a day. It might, might last several days, and it might last several hours. I'm getting better at being able to, like, sort myself out and be, like, okay, what do you need right now? What do you need to do? And trying to help myself move forward. But honoring the fact that I need to do something, not just like, well, scrape yourself up, eh, you know, because you're just being a big baby right now. That's not helpful. Um, so I know I told you in another video I was going to share my journey, you know, trying to recover from this postpartum depression with you. And that's, that's just like my thought for right now that I wanted to share with you that um, it's important to do those things, to make those um, realizations and sometimes to proclaim it to other people even though you are, are potentially embarrassed by it. Sometimes um, that might be what needs to happen in order for you to start uh, moving forward. And I do feel like I'm moving forward. Definitely still struggle with it, but um, I'm not in the same place I was a few weeks ago. So that's a good thing. I'm moving somewhere. Um, anyway, I hope you guys all have a beautiful day. I hope the weather is beautiful where you're at like it is here right now. And um, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.